<laughs> not the kind of thing you think of Formula a One wh- drivers. Driver. No, but he was having a nice ice cream. <laughs> it was a, a dairy whip soft serve, I think it was, something like that. Hi guys, Scott here from Outlaw Gage. We've got something a little bit different on the channel today. So we've taken a little bit of a flog in here in Melbourne because there's a big Italian community here and we are all about Porsches most of the time and air-cooled cars. But today, we're mixing it a li- up a little bit. We're in a man cave and we've got a selection of cars here which we do not normally get on the channel. So here we go, we're in a secret Melbourne location. We're with Sandro. How are we? So, not a Porsche in sight. No, sorry, as much <laughs> as I love them. But no, not a Porsche in sight. Maybe one or two models upstairs. Some mo- definitely some models up there. A classic Italian collection. Yeah, born and bred. Born and bred. I've got to blame my father, obviously. My father, my brother, everyone. Yeah, yeah born and bred. Small cars. I'm a small person, so I like my small cars. <laughs> Except for, we'll come to the Maserati at the top, <laughs> which is by far anything other than small. Small, correct. We should probably do a bit of a lap. Yep. Start with the Fiat, and then we'll go through. As we can see, there is a bit of a collection and there's some stuff up on the wall. And as we go up the stairs in a moment, there's a bit more up there as well. Let's start off with the Fiat. So you are actually a big member of the- Fiat Car Club. Fiat Car Club. Victoria, yeah, correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is big. Very big at the moment, yeah. We've yeah. got about 600 members. Yeah, okay. And we've got a great array of cars. My father was a mechanic, loved Fiat's, so we obviously got the bug. Uh, the first car that you'll see is the little Fiat 500 here that my father, my brother-in-law and myself built from scratch. This is the second car. The first car actually rolled. We won't go oh. into that yet, but I rolled it. Uh, Doing the Dutton Grand Prix rally in 94. Okay. So, uh, but this one has been morphed out to a, an Arbath replica. It's had quite a bit of success based in magazines and so forth. So, I really, a great car to bring out. People, you could have it near a Ferrari 488 and this will get the photos. Yeah. People move around this to have a look at. But it goes well. Look, it's hard, it's rough. It's a uh, stiff suspension. A little two-cylinder lawnmower engine, that's all it is. 650. Synchro gearbox, four-speed synchro, side draft, 28 mil carburetor. Dad did some tricks inside the engine. It goes well. Very clean. Yeah, clean little like jigger. These wheels are very nice there. And just the paint and everything on it. That paint is about over, oh, well, I got painted in 94. There you go, I had to get a new shell, or a second-hand shell, that yeah. I paid them $300. And we, we put everything back together. We put it all back together. So that's how long it's been. Wow. It doesn't see much rain. You know, it's, I just uh, I just enjoy bringing it out. Yeah. And it's a bit of a memory of my father who's passed away, so it's nice. No, it is nice. The decals on the side. The seats are lovely. <laughs> see if you can get in. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure about that. They are a tight set of seats. They are. I can definitely tell when I'm in the play the past or when I have to get <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cracking. And then some vintage cooling on the back. Yeah. And scoops. And then the motor in there. Oh, can I have that if you like? There we go. Oh, it's pretty motor as well. <laughs> Look at that. This one here is an Auto Bianchi Arbath. Okay. So Auto Bianchi were obviously Italian and they built the equivalent of what we'll call it the Mini Minor. Okay, size wise. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then they went to Arbath, Carlo Arbath, and in association with Carlo Arbath, they designed it as an Auto Bianchi Arbath. So it's automatically got 70 brake horsepower yeah. from a 1050cc motor. So that's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. Five speed gearbox. Oh. This is left hand drive. This, I chased a, the person that owned it to just sell, sell, sell. It took me about three years, but we got it. And it's been a joy. It's only come out a few times. I've got to get it onto um, club plates shortly. But we've just done a few extra things to it. We put some uh, wider guards on it, which were an option back then, those days, to do your hill climb races. Yeah. Some bigger tyres, bigger rims, but uh, this I absolutely love. This is a, 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 I can say it's a genuine Arbath, Fiat Arbath. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm happy to have. Yeah, so there's the motor. Yeah. A little carb on top. 
Yeah, no, nothing to it, is there? No, no. Simplicity. Yeah. They only built them to go fast. Hopefully, last for four or five laps, and then you have to come back in. But no, the, nice and simple car. But a good little screamer, if that makes any sense. They, yeah, they, yeah, They yeah. really went well on the hill climbs back in Italy. A tiny battery as well. <laughs> that is minute, that battery. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then the roll cage in the back. Yeah. Seats. We believe this came from Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah, we believe it came from Japan. So was it here in Melbourne? Yeah, I bought it here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bought it here, yeah. but probably a Japanese car. I found some, some stickers from Japan that it raced in. Some of the events, Italian events that they did. Oh, so it's had a bit of a history then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. They're still around in Italy, obviously. A lot of them are used for slalom racing, hill climb racing. Yeah. Um, but I just like this one because it's actually quite nice and original. And I just put the stickers on myself and uh, just, yeah, just make it look uh, something different. Yeah. So then we come to... Then at the back you'll see a Fiat 1500 Mark III. That's the blue one on your left hand side. Fiat 1500 Mark, Mark III. III. That's a bit of a sentimental reasons because my dad had one too, a white one. I remember that other plate. Um, and I think they're a great little uh, family car to drive around if I want to ever go out the family for um, car shows. Yeah. We bring that. I've just picked up some Baroni rims on there. I didn't know, I was going to ask. So yeah. we are going to have a bit of a talk about rims and um, uh, steering wheels in a moment. So that Baroni, did yeah, you say? Yeah, Baroni's, yeah. Wow, look at those. Nice and heavy, great for anchors. <laughs> They're actually in really good condition Not as well, aren't they? I'm going to put it on the blue car on the 1500 with some white walls. I think it'll look really nice. Yeah, that. They look sharp. Yeah, yeah, they're actually in really good condition. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do that. Here, with the amazing fog lights. <laughs> Commodore fog lights. <laughs> <laughs> the Cinquecento. Cinquecento. All right. So, look, I just saw this on the paper. I thought, I've got to buy it. It's a 500 or a Cinquecento. I thought, I'll have a crack. I'll buy it. Then, more Google searching while I'm working, I found that they had a Trofeo series, Fiat Cinquecento Trofeo in Italy, which was a support races for the F1s. So, I've bought it, I'm going to morph it a bit, I've got the right rims to put on, which I've got powder coated white, I've got a Sparco race set at the back, not going to race, it's just something different to drive around, instead of driving the white one every now and then, it breaks your back. <laughs> I'm getting a bit old, so I've got a bit, bit bigger 500 and I'll drive that around uh, on club plates. And again, you've not seen these on the roads in Australia at all because they never came out. Definitely not. And I've definitely not seen that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maserati. Right, Maserati up there. I've always had a love of it. My father had one that uh, my brother imported from America at, in, back in the early 80s, sorry, late 80s. So I thought, you know, it is a Maserati, it's simple as that. So I yeah. thought I'd like to buy turbo V6, twin turbo, they really go well, I think, but the usual issues of Italian spaghetti with electrics. <sighs> yeah, look, okay. don't go there. <laughs> a red will be interpreted as a green when it should be red all the way, so. But this one is a nice Australian delivered. Yeah, okay. Zender body kit with the B45 Simmons. Funny thing is, these were 149 brand new. So they were a good price. How long ago was that? Uh, late 80s. Whoa. Yeah, oh yeah. That's it. Uh, There's some price there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I've got the receipt for it, the invoice for it. Uh, I picked this up from Sydney. I picked it up on eBay. Funny, should not say. But uh, an elderly gentleman that had it, and I reassured him, look, it's going to come to a nice family. We'll stay here. We'll look after it. Since I've bought it, I've put it up there and it has not come down. Oh, really? So this will need a bit of recommissioning shortly. But this will be for myself and my wife just to drive around on a nice And Sunday. a beautiful sound. And a beautiful sound. Yeah. yeah, beautiful sound. So then just while we're here, <laughs> at the back wall. Yeah. If you can't have a real size F1, you might as well get a one to one, one yeah. and a half size F1. Where did you find that? Our friend eBay. So eBay and I have a great association, right? And I've got my son, Damien. Video is not sponsored by eBay. No. I have, no thank you. I have a, my son, I, said, I gave him a mission. I said, Damien, find that for me. He found one in Queensland. 
Uh, we got it shipped down. We took the motor out. It had a little Coma go-kart motor in it. We took that off to sort of offset the start the price. We sold that. Then we got it all resprayed, put the stickers on. We did the tribute to Nigel Mansell because in Leone, if we all remember yep. Nigel Mansell when he drove for Ferrari, he definitely drove the rings out of it. And uh, I said, well, let's put it on the wall. <laughs> That's where it is. It has not come down. And then the car little pedal car I bought in the uh, swap meet. Little pedal car. I, I've always like, had a fascination for pedal cars. Yeah. Italian pedal cars. I've got to say, I've got a, it. Like, I think either people are into like Hot Wheels cars and things like that. But Correct. I'm more of a pedal, pedal car. car. Kind of. And look, they are fantastic from the workmanship. That is a, I believe, a late '80s. Though. It's a replica of yep. an old vintage one. All you see here is just a labour of love that's taken me yes. over 40 years to yes. accumulate <laughs> yes. and to put now finally in my garage. Yeah, These are all been in boxes or at my mum's house or whatever. Now to be able to just wake up from the bedroom and know that my cars are here, it's a great feeling. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then a... Look, I bought an Alpha Spider. Uh-huh. Okay, now don't ask me why, but I thought, you know what? We need a nice convertible to drive around in the summer, when, it, when, it, when we have a summer in Melbourne, okay? Yeah. So this is a low mileage from WA, 84,000 Ks, service books. Uh, that's not a lot of Ks. Not a lot of Ks at all. Um, again, like the Maserati, I've just bought it, put it in here. That's all righty. <laughs> but I'll get, to, I'll get to this one too. We'll put this on club plates, not uh, 98. It might be close to club plates. Uh, that's not very far off, is it? No. This has got the Momo interior, which I didn't know when I bought it, but it's got the Momo interior. There's the Momo on the sides, nice Ooh. tan interior. That must have been a rare option. It was an option, yeah, it was an option. A, a, an added option it was, through the dealerships, which I think it was either done in Australia or overseas, I can't remember. But um, yeah, nice little twin spark. Yeah. So as we've kind of gone around, people will see that we've kind of avoided a number of steering <laughs> the, wheels. The two Christmas trees of steering wheels. Which are there, and yep. then there's some uh, wheels on the floor. We might cover the wheels first because uh, they've, they've all got a bit of a story. So here we've got, that's a Lotus Formula One wheel, did you say? So I've been told, yes, correct, from the Adelaide Grand Prix. I've got no certificate of authenticity, but look for me, I bought it. <laughs> it, it. It looks like a Formula One wheel. It does, yeah. Somewhere. It does. And then what else have we got here? Larry so Perkins cracked rim there, and my father's two, four, sorry, set of four race rims. He had on his one, two, four Spider, which were from an Elfin, an Australian car. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know those. Which is that yep. one there. Yep. So those ones there. And some McLaren rims at the back. I believe that the sports cars. Yeah, Which okay. That big K and M one. I'm not sure what it is. It MS or M R five one or not sure. But that's those. And then your steering wheels. I don't know why I'm collecting steering wheels. I've stopped now. More that's steering it. wheels than cars. More steering wheels than cars. Oh, well, I'd love to have it the other way. But more steering wheels than cars. And look, they range from Momo, Personnel, to uh, Nardis, and to some R bathrooms that I've got. <laughs> yeah, why not? Well, I thought. Let's yeah, buy it. and they're actually really nice stands for them as well, aren't they? Well, courtesy of uh, Auto Barns, I found out who their supplier was, and we bought two sets. Ah, oh, that's nice of them. You just got to ask the question, I suppose. I can't say no. Yeah, and got some nice Alpha rims on here. Yeah, I'll move that yeah, around. There's some old yeah, some old, yeah, well, some yeah, really some stunning Alpha rims that my brother gave me a couple of them. Yeah, wow. Some really nice Julias and alpha spider rims. Bikes that used to pedal to start them up or assist them to get up the hills. So, a matter of good thing. That green. Green one, yeah. That green is lovely. That's a cute one, that one. Yeah, yeah, Still yeah, got yeah. the Italian Reggio there too. <laughs> the Peugeot, which is French. Yeah. And the Solix. This one here, you pedal, then you lower the motor down onto the front wheel. Oh. And, then the motor, and then the front wheel kicks, and then the motor kicks in. And like any true man cave. Gotta have your uh, garage and alia, definitely, yeah. up there. And a few slot cars, go electrics. Yeah. Yeah, up the top there. Your golden fleece. So, I think we might go upstairs. Let's make our way up. <laughs> you are clearly not a man that has thrown your... Um, 
uh, any of your magazines away no. at any point. Look, uh, yeah, great for reference points. Yeah. And great for when friends come over and they have a read and they say, oh, I remember that car, I remember this car. Yeah. Or if someone's restoring, they can come and have a look and grab some information. But uh, again, I'm mm-hmm. not a model builder, but I just love the boxes. I love the artwork yeah. of, of Tamir and all that, what they did, you know. Just beautiful, like the Ali Tali 131. Then the uh, Fiat Martini. There's a little uh, Auto Bank Yaba 500 again. Uh, Lancia Stratus yes. Turbo as well. Yes. And then some old models here. I do like the old. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, those old vintage Formula One Jeez, cars. They were ahead of their time, weren't they? Some of these designers. Yeah, amazing. And there are a couple of Porsches up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Porsche, don't worry about that. <laughs> I probably left my run too late to buy one. <laughs> and then racing helmets. Mansell, Raikkonen, myself, Peter Brock, uh, Augustini's helmet there. Wow. Wow. So I've got, I think, uh, Casey Stoner, Rossi. But you'll see now that this is, uh, this is it. I am now finished collecting. Oh, look, we've heard. We always say that. We've heard know, that know, before, haven't we? I know, I know. There we go. Yeah, that's uh, this is the interior this for. This is the interior of what I'm going to call my outlaw version, okay? Yeah. This is an interior of my uh, Fiat 1500 station wagon, which is very rare in Australia. Uh, this is a, I'm lucky enough that my, my brother located that car in New South Wales. Uh, then I convinced him, look, I'll take it and I'll, I'll fix it up. It's probably been now through COVID. I've had it where I'm doing it myself, uh, done all the suspension work and all that, and got the interior done by a, a great friend of mine, Phil, who's uh, done some beautiful work. But it's going to be my It's version. a lovely interior. Like that brown is... Yeah, it's a real 60s colour. And the car's burgundy, isn't burgundy, it? Burgundy. But oxidized, you yeah. name it. Uh, I've lowered it, um, and I'm just looking forward to bringing it because it's going to turn heads for sure. And the purists will probably won't like it. <laughs> yeah, but that's a that's a cracking interior. Yeah, it is. It is. So my dad raced push bikes, then motorbikes, then Ford Anglia, and then that's the Ford Anglia, correct? Right? And then the Arbath Sipka below. Yeah. Also raced a 124 Spider, even a bit further down, you'll see there's a 124 Spider. Yep. And then, obviously, like father, like son, my brother took over from my dad where my dad left off. And my brother raced formula cars, didn't race um, tin tops or anything like that. He raced formula cars, he raced Formula 2, won the Australian title, uh, then went to what was called Formula Pacific or Formula Atlantic equivalent, then raced the odd touring cars in Australia, and then packed his bags up and went overseas and uh, tried to conquer overseas, which he went well. He went to, knocked on the door of Lancia Martini and said, uh, you know, look, I'm here. And they gave him a, they gave him a crack and uh, he more than impressed them. And he ended up driving for the Le Mans LMC, uh, LC2 car, which um, I think he came seventh, fifth, oh, sorry, sixth actually. Oh, sixth wow. Le Mans, yeah. So he did that's, well. Yeah, that's some That's the actual there. model there. Yeah, that's some history. It is. Yeah, it definitely is. And now, lucky enough that he's located my father's car again, the Arbath Simca, and he's doing a meticulous restoration on the car. Uh, great to have it back in the family. Yeah. Um, and that will be definitely a car to see when it comes out, which I would say next year it'll be out, do, do various shows. Yeah. He'll display it, probably do display laps, but he won't race it. I've always had a love for McLaren. No, Any particular reason? I just like the Bruce McLaren story. Yeah. You know, okay. New Zealander that went overseas, like Jack Brabham. Yeah. Right? They've come from our lands here to conquer the Europeans. Big manufacturers to conquer, and they, and they achieved it. McLaren won world titles, and Brabham won world titles. Yeah. And they had some great drivers. James Hunt, the playboy of F1. Yeah, you know, yeah. All that sort of stuff. Uh, Fittipaldi, um, obviously up until now, Lewis Hamilton's, and and so forth and obviously Paul Ricardo who's not really doing the best at the moment yeah bless him so there's that's, a, that's probably uh, I, I take pride of that photo um, when, the, when the F1s came to Australia 96 into Melbourne sorry 
It was at Adelaide. I only went once to Adelaide. And then when it came to Melbourne, we were obviously over the moon to have in our backyard. And we had the opportunity to, how do I say, uh, just look around who was around, the, of sponsors and so forth. And we met up with Mr. Asprey, who's the, he was the jeweler to the Queen, the princess, Prince of Wales. And uh, I just went up to him, cold call, just went up to him, had a chat to him. Just being natural. Yeah. Didn't ask him for any favours or whatever, just having a chat. What are you doing here? What do you think of Australia? What do you think of Melbourne? He took a liking to us. We took, definitely took a liking to him. And we had parted ways to walk away, but then I felt a tap on my shoulder and he said, come with me. And I sort of knew what was gonna happen. And I had a great friend of mine, actually two friends of mine that were with me. And uh, we got taken into the pits in 1996, into the Ferrari pits. And Shoemaker was sitting on the on the box of where, where they put all the spare parts. And uh, Mr. Asprey called him over. He said, some friends of mine are here. And we had a chat with him, with Shoemaker, which was oh, quite nice. Yeah. But we made sure we didn't ask him just mundane questions about the car. We just said, how's life going? How's the family? Are they here with you? Whatever. Just normal, small talk. Yeah. And I think he appreciated that more because we had cameras going. Like we thought we were paparazzi. We were going <laughs> crazy on us. And he had the poor thing. He had the ice cream. It was melting. <laughs> I said, sorry, do you want me to hold you? He goes, that's right. <laughs> and he signed my cap. Well, I mean, look, if we could get anything signed, we just, yeah. And he personalised it to us. We made sure, make, make it to our names, because we want to cherish this. Yeah, yeah. I did. I actually didn't notice the ice cream. Yeah, the ice cream's in that way. It's not the kind of thing you think of Formula a One driver. No, but he was having a nice ice cream. <laughs> I think it was a, a Dairy Whip soft serve. I think it was something like that, right? Should have had a gelati, I reckon, personally, but... It was 96, it was the first Grand Prix in Melbourne, so it was all new to us. Yeah. All new to us. Thanks, Sandro, for the tour. Uh, a magnificent man cave and um, a little bit of European Italian hitting the channel for once. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you later. See you guys. Bye.